All right, on to the next section. Hopefully you had some good results with your homework from section three there and you have some good movie recommendations. Maybe you came up with some new ideas and if so, that's awesome. So let's talk about how to scale up what you just did. So far, everything we've been doing has been running on a single computer on your computer locally. And kind of the whole point of big data is that you can throw out bigger data sets at these technologies that are so big that your computer can't even handle it. And the way that we do that is with Hadoop. Hadoop is basically a cluster of computers that you can run your MapReduce jobs on. So let's go over how that works and how Hadoop is laid out. So first of all, breathe a sigh of relief. You've gotten through the hardest part of this course. We spent a lot of time on MapReduce and the concepts there because that's the stuff that's hard to wrap your head around and that's the real challenge of framing these problems as MapReduce problems. But Hadoop itself is sort of the substrate that MapReduce runs on that allows it to be distributed throughout multiple machines. And all you really need to know is at a high level how that works and how to get your MapReduce jobs to take advantage of what Hadoop has to offer, which is a much simpler concept than actually writing MapReduce code. So congratulations, you've gone through the most challenging part of the course at this point. Now we just need to kind of walk through all this other stuff. So what is Hadoop? Like I said, it's, it's a framework for running your MapReduce jobs or really other kinds of jobs too, but it's a framework for distributed computing at a high level. And it's what manages the cluster that you might be running your MapReduce jobs on. So it allows you to spread out the processing of all of your mappers and all of your reducers among a cluster of potentially inexpensive computers instead of just on one. I mean, com computers have gotten to the point where they're commodities. You can have racks and racks of them and rent time on them through cloud-based services such as Amazon. And that can be much more efficient than you know buying a monolithic gigantic computer that has to crunch all these numbers all in one system and be limited by the memory that's available on that one system and the CPU power available on that one system. So by spreading out the load of your job throughout many computers, even if they're relatively low power computers, it allows you to scale these jobs out, you know, potentially infinitely. The more computers you add at, onto one of these jobs, the more you can spread out that load of the processing and you can then manage bigger and bigger data sets, potentially, you know, almost unlimited. I mean, bear in mind, Google has to process the entire internet whenever it does a crawl and update its search indexes for, for Google. And it uses techniques like MapReduce and, and Hadoop in order to spread out the load of that computation. The other thing that it gives you is redundancy. So if you throw even more computers at the problem, what you can do is actually duplicate the same mappers and reducers and the same sets of data among multiple machines. So imagine you have one of, one of the problems in running a large cluster is that you increase the likelihood of one of the computers in that cluster of going down at any given point. Maybe they crashed, maybe someone pulled the plug because they kicked it. Maybe it had a hardware failure, you just never know. But with Hadoop, it can actually duplicate where it stores data so that if one machine goes down, there's a backup available that it can automatically go to. So not only does it increase the scalability of your processing, it can also offer redundancy and make it more fault tolerant to hardware failures. So remember this diagram that we talked about a while ago? It was sort of how we introduced the concept of thinking about how your mappers and reducers might not be running on the same computer, which again is very important. You can't write code that assumes that you're running on a specific machine, a specific operating system, a specific file system. You know, you can't assume that everything that you need is going to be present unless you explicitly make sure your MapReduce job is configured such that the resources it needs are distributed along with the code. But let's take a, a closer look at this again because managing all these different boxes is really what Hadoop does. So it figures out how to break up all of these mapper tasks, how to break up all the reducer tasks, and most importantly, how to break up all the data that these mappers and reducers are processing. So for example, we have a large data set potentially. It can split up that data among three different machines that are running mappers independently on different partitions of that data. And then the partitioning function of MapReduce can then figure out what partitions of mapped data go to which reducers. So recall that a reducer will take a given key and take all of its sorted and grouped, it will sort all the keys, take a given key and receive all of its grouped values for that key. So that means different keys can be processed by different reducers once all of that grouping is done. And again, it's just a matter of making sure that all of the data that is required for that reducer is in the right place on that reducer's computers. So the real challenge of Hadoop 
is how to distribute that data and make sure that it's always available where it needs to be, but not have it all centralized on one file system that's going to be a bottleneck for all of these different mappers and reducers. And that's really the core of Hadoop, and we'll talk about that next. Hopefully you have an idea of how Hadoop partitions MapReduce jobs amongst multiple computers and what the implications of that are. You need to make sure, you know, remember, you can't assume that your code is going to be running on one computer. Your mappers and your reducers are all going to be running on different nodes potentially, and you can't assume that a specific file is going to be there. You can't assume a specific package is going to be there. And also, remember that you might not even be running on the same operating system. That's important because, for example, on Windows, files are not case sensitive, but on Linux they are. So you need to pay attention to things like the capitalization of your file names even. Anyway, hopefully you understand now how Hadoop is a powerful tool for analyzing large amounts of data and scaling that across larger clusters. So let's talk in more detail about how that works next.